Good day and welcome to another Aruba Networks Com Solutions Tech Tip. My name is Bill Carr. I'm the Chief Mobility Architect at the Com Solutions Company. And what I'd like to discuss with you today is a technical tip on how to accommodate clients that make very poor AP association and roaming decisions in your Aruba wireless LAN environment. This is true whether you have the Aruba Instant Solution or physical controller-based solution as well. This involves the tuning of a per SSID parameter that is named the local probe response thresholds. So clients in, in a wireless LAN associate in two methods when learning about wireless LANs that can service them. They learn via beacons uh, if the SSID is broadcast. They also probe for wireless LANs that they have profile, uh, profiles defined for. These probes ask for a list of BSSIDs or radios which can support the profile they have defined or, or network name they have defined, ESSID they have defined. Subsequent to receiving the probe response, the client chooses which BSSID to target um, the association request to. Some clients do a really good job of evaluating the, the list of responses that they get, and they make very good decisions based on signal strength, receive signal uh, quality, and uh, make the association request to the, the appropriate AP. Some clients, however, sort them by very bad criteria, such as the MAC address of the BSSID doesn't take into account the signal strength or, or signal quality. Even more common today is the potential for differing radio powers, as APs can transmit at power levels up to 100 milliwatts, but we're starting to see low-powered clients as low as 10 milliwatts. So it's very possible that a client could send a request to probe to get a list of uh, potential APs to service it um, and get a set of responses back that are APs that could not necessarily service it at anything above the very low data rates at which the probe, beacon, and other management frames are sent. Those association and management frames are all sent at the very lowest data rates of 1 and 2 megs. And by doing so, they actually travel a, a much farther distance than the higher data rates. So it's very possible that a client could send a probe request and get a response back from an AP that it couldn't associate above one or two megs with. So in the 613 code train, as well as in the Aruba Instant uh, 3.3 and above uh, level, there is the ability for us to identify the variable called the local probe request threshold. You'll see it here on the screen. It's actually on the SSID profile. It can be adjusted per SSID. This is on the advanced tab. And what this actually is, is a, a level below which, um, if we have an SNR value below the, the value we set this variable to, the AP will not send a response to probes received for that SSID. So if I have a low-powered client and I receive a, re a probe request um, from, from a client and his signal-to-noise ratio is below 20 in, the, in this particular example, um, we would not respond from that particular AP. So what we're doing is actually providing the client a much more effective list of APs that can service it. What we're seeing in production uh, the deployments that actually tend to work really well are va uh, values for this variable between about 15 and 25. Uh, most work very well at about 18 to 20. Again, this is not a panacea. It's a single factor in dealing with clients that make poor roaming decisions. Uh, it will not deal with environments with overpowered RF or too many APs, which is sometimes confused with a client making a poor choice, or it's actually a performance issue that has nothing to do with the client making a poor choice. Uh, it's actually contending with uh, interference or uh, uh, channel utilization or, interfer uh, or other, other RF obstacles. So we can actually um, adjust this number to provide that roaming scenario that, that works better. We actually had a customer recently uh, which had a residence hall and what we found is um, all the students entered this residence hall through a particular set of doors. There was an AP near that doorway that after the users returned to their rooms in a three-story building servicing potentially 60 to 80 wireless clients, um, all of the, about 85 percent of those clients remained on the AP near the entranceway. So we could have adjusted a few things to, to deal with this. Um, the first thought was, let's quickly reduce the transmit power of that particular AP so that it's not seen further into the facility. The problem with that adjustment would be that it's, um, it's a very uh, partial fix. We would have probably created a coverage hole 
and it wouldn't deal with roaming from floor to floor, or once the users picked yet another AP, um, they would potentially be sticky and hang on to that as well. So what we actually did is validate using the command line utilities on the controller if we had clients making poor roaming decisions. And we made those adjustments and were able to validate the improvement by having that same client that would have previously stayed on the entranceway AP move to where they would normally use their, their wireless client and actually be on an AP that is either A, the closest or much closer than the entranceway AP. So before we start making adjustments to our environment, we first must identify what the, the causes are to uh, the, the, the problems we're experiencing. So one of the things that we can do uh, for a scenario where we have a, a particular AP that we think may have clients that are uh, associated at, at low signal noise ratios or, or hanging on too long is actually start to look at um, using the show AP debug client table command. Um, there is actually the same uh, mechanism in the instant virtual controller on the diagnostics page to actually get a client table we can actually see the signal noise ratio received from the client. Um, this actually looks really good. However, we have one client that appears that they may be a little sticky or, or um, maybe making some poor roaming decisions. It's down around that 20 number. If we start to see a number of clients, uh, especially below 15 or 18, um, then we may want to start looking at areas where we make adjustments to that local probe response threshold. Um, there are also scenarios, as I mentioned earlier, that there may be interference or channel utilization. We can actually validate those on the dashboard of our controller or in our virtual environment by looking for channel utilization percentages for AP receive and transmit time and also interference. And if we see these numbers at significantly high numbers, we may need to either A, mitigate the interference source or uh, adjust our channel assignments uh, or um, eliminate the, uh, the, the channel utilization issue. And that can be done through a number of other mechanisms that Com Solutions would be happy to discuss with you. Um, one of the things we're finding is as more and more clients come into our environments, we're dealing with these problems on a day-to-day -day basis more and more frequently. Um, and we'd love to help you with uh, lessons learned um, in dealing with complex um, RF and wireless LAN environments. It's also important to note if, if we make adjustments to the local probe response threshold that some clients may still make poor roaming decisions. Remember earlier we discussed the clients make the, those, those association requests based on two uh, potential mechanisms. One is that probe probing mechanism. The other is the beacon. So a client could receive a beacon from a, a, an AP that has a uh, that is not necessarily the best one to service them and send an association response to it. So it is possible that you could still have some clients make poor decisions. Um, if you're broadcasting the SSID, a mechanism we can use to validate that would be to hide that SSID for a group of APs and have that problematic client move through that facility or through that, 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 that RF space. Um, again, as I said, it's not something that's a, a, an absolute panacea, uh, but we have found a, a number of environments where we can make significant improvements in the end user experience and make Wi-Fi usable uh, and um, a much better experience using the hardware you have in place today and just simply tuning and optimizing it uh, to get the most for your investment. Thank you very much for reviewing. Please stay tuned and come back and visit often for additional Aruba Tech Tips. If you have any additional needs or concerns, please visit our website at www.comsolutions.com or contact us via email or telephone.